in the workshop and this time it's my workshop and I'm looking at two Stuart model steam engines so why am I showing you the garden and my hose pipe and my bath this is a bath that I have in the garden a friend of mine brought it round today why do I have a bath in the garden it's because I need to continue with the series called a steamboat named Edith this by the way is not another bath it's the base for this particular bath it's quite a nice bath as far as baths go this steamboat named Edith is a very old model boat and the hull is constructed from a lot of pieces of tin plate which are all soft soldered together so I want to make sure that it floats before I start work on it, hence the bath. This package arrived in the post a few days ago and it's the first chance that I've had to have a look at it. The package contains two Stuart model steam engines and there's something wrong with both of them. The first one is a Stuart double 10 V. And going on first impressions, it looks to be very well made. The drain cocks are a bit loose, they just need shim washers in them. Also in the same box is a Stuart S50. And the owner of the engines reports that they don't run properly and he wants me to sort them out. He sent me both of these engines to examine so that I can give him an accurate price for putting them right. This is a top tip and it's an essential tip if you're working on a Stuart 10V with a spoked flywheel. The box bed that the engine sits on is not tall enough to lift the flywheel off the bench and this shows what can happen if the engine is not supported and the flywheel is allowed to touch the bench. But this damage on this particular engine happened in the post. This engine was very well packed so there's no damage at all and first impressions looking at it it seems to be very well made. The first thing I have to do is plug up the hole that normally takes a displacement lubricator with a blanking plug. I'm going to be testing this engine on compressed air and as we all know displacement lubricators only work with steam because with compressed air there's nothing to displace. The first thing I notice is that the flywheel is loose on the crankshaft so I've tightened that up now, I've connected an airline and I'm about to supply some compressed air to the engine to see if it works. And it sort of works, well almost works. The timing's out, I've had a look at the timing and it's really out, it's miles away. So what shall I do first? Normally when I'm doing an appraisal on an engine, if it's something minor, I will generally put it right. I charge a small fee for looking at the engines, but sometimes I can fix the engine, like I did with the one that was totally seized, without charging the customer any more money. Often though this is not the case, because some of the engines I get sent need a lot of work. So I'm hoping that this engine works fine after I've set the timing. I've produced a few videos showing in great detail how to set the valve timing on a model steam engine. But people still get confused when the steam engine has reversing gear. What you have to do is separate your brain into two halves. Well I know it's in two halves to start with. What you have to do is set the largest lobe of the eccentric at 90 degrees to the crank web. But you need to do this at each side and first of all it has to be on the eccentric that is operating the valve spindle. When I move the reversing lever, you will notice that what happens is the expansion link swings across and changes which eccentric drives the valve spindle. It's quite simple, but it's very clever. There are many different types of valve gear, and some are even cleverer than this. This is called Stevenson's link valve gear, and it's very common on engines of this type. With this engine, I cannot adjust the inner eccentric, it's pegged to the outer one. As I adjust the outer eccentric, the inner eccentric moves too, exactly the same amount. This is not a problem, provided that the eccentrics are pegged together exactly at 180 degrees to each other. Sometimes this is not the case. But as you can see, by going back and forth and making small adjustments, I can get this engine to run quite well. Sometimes, and especially on steam locomotives, both models and full size, the engine will always be set so that it runs better in forward rather than reverse gear. In the case of this engine, I think I can get it to run evenly at both ends, which means the position of the valve in the valve chest is probably okay. And personally, I don't think it's worth going to the expense for me to go any further into this engine, because the next job is to remove the steam chest covers and have a look in there to see exactly where the valve is relative to each of the eccentrics. Now that I've spent a little bit of time adjusting the eccentrics to get them to optimum setting, the engine goes into reverse and forward gear very easily. I'll stop speaking for a while, just have a listen.
It's very easy to get very obsessive at this point, and I'm a little bit like that. I'm making another fine tweak because it runs great in one direction, but the beats are not quite even enough in the other direction, so I'm making a very, very fine adjustment. This is based on experience. I can't really say what I'm doing, just that when it is right, it feels right and it sounds right. Like a lot of things, you just need plenty of patience and eventually the engine will run how you want it to run, in both directions evenly. I think I'd better leave it at that before men in white coats arrive and drag me off to the asylum. In this clip the engine's running quite slowly, it sounds more or less the same when it's running in either direction and it changes direction smoothly and the pressure is quite low, it's not going very fast. I'm just stopping the engine to give it some more oil. Oil is of paramount importance on a steam engine because it is a total loss system. So I oil all the moving parts and I think the engine is running quite sweetly but I can hear that one of the cylinders is slightly not in harmony with the other one. So I'm going to stop the engine and make a very, very fine adjustment. And as you can see here, by fine, I mean a very fine adjustment. That side's as good as I can get it now for the other side. Now it's time to look at the other engine, which is a Stuart S50 horizontal steam engine. This is not the best example of an S50 that I've ever seen, and it's complete with a big dint in the cladding on the cylinder, and it's suffering from the normal S50 problem, and that is that the crankshaft is loose in the crank web, because the crank web just screws onto the end of the crankshaft, which is threaded. The other problem with S50s, which is common, is the cylinder works loose. And when I look underneath, it's even worse. It's only really held with one bolt. This nut just spins forever, so that means the stud's stripped. The other one on the left-hand side, that clamps up OK. And then, of course, at the top, the third one is missing entirely. This in itself is not a major issue, but first of all, I need to see if the engine runs. I've connected the compressed air line to it, and when I spin the flywheel, nothing happens. The air is blowing straight into the steam chest and straight out of the exhaust, which is a sure sign that the valve isn't seating on the port face. And the engine's just not even trying. As this crankshaft is a very loose fit into the crank web, and also looking at the flywheel it's probably bent, the prognosis for this engine is not very good. It doesn't matter where the eccentric is set relative to the piston, you can feel nothing, it's just blowing straight to exhaust all the time. And now to sum up. The Stuart 10V is more or less fine as it is, and with the adjustments that you've seen me make to the engine, it runs quite well in both directions now. Unfortunately, there are several problems with this S50, the loose cylinder, the crankshaft being loose in the crank web, and the fact that nothing happens at all when I put air into it other than it blowing to exhaust, means that it could be the slide valve, it could be the piston, it could be a whole variety of different things. I don't know what the cylinder's like inside, and the list of problems goes on and on, so really it's impractical for me to repair this engine because my repair bill would exceed the value of the engine itself. And that's it for now, thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you found it useful.